Hello and welcome to Inside the Women of Denver, where we talk to local leaders about their successes, failures, and lessons learned on the journey to success. I'm Crystal Covington and I'm here with Roxy Jean, my favorite rock star personal trainer here in Denver. I've experienced her workouts personally and she makes a tremendous impact by bringing her extraordinary energy, drive to help others feel great, and the empathy to know what her clients are going through. She's also a certified Reiki practitioner, and best of all, she has a really amazing hero story about the journey of taking the lead in her life to start her own business. Roxy, I'm so glad to have you today. I'm very honored that you asked me, thank you. Oh, great, <laughs> I'm so glad. This is, this is one of my friends, so it's kind of gonna be a little girl session. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> all right, so Roxy, just start by telling us a little bit about yourself. How'd you get started in this business, and a little bit about who you are as a person. Um, so I, hmm, that's a loaded question, right? So I actually got started in the business um, four years ago, but three years prior to that, I was in the coffee industry and I was insanely bored. Okay. Um, it was the same challenges day in and day out. And um, I'm one of those people when I'm not being challenged or I'm not working, um, progressing myself, um, mentally, physically, um, emotionally, I get really um, So <clears throat> I uh, kind of the tipping point for me was um, I was sitting down with my boss and we were going over my bonus for the next year. Mm -hmm. And she Love was like, bonuses. you're gonna bonus $10,000. And I was like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> you said it? Eh? Yeah, I totally did. <laughs> I was like, well, that's nice, but I'm not really happy. Oh, wow. <laughs> so um, I, I, I left that job. It was a great, it was a great company to work for. Um, yeah. But um, I wasn't happy with what I was doing. So I left it and I was like, okay, I need to figure out what I want to do because um, I didn't have a plan B um, and I was 27. And so I was like, I should probably figure this out. And, yeah. And, uh, um, I've gone through a lot of um, a lot of personal challenges um, in childhood, just in growing up, and so it was between um, life coach or personal trainer. Yeah. Um, and so I chose personal trainer. And, Good choice. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a blast. I've truly, truly enjoyed it. Um, but it took me it took me a good three years to actually finally make it happen. Yeah. Um, I, I moved to Denver and I started working in coffee again because I was comfortable with that and finally I was like, all right, you need to like do something. So I, I started school, um, I took a 15 month program, a um, little more in depth than just like a weekend certification. Yeah. And, um, and then six months after I graduated, I started my own business. And I was like, okay, well, let's do this. So when I interviewed you one time before for a written um, interview, you mm -hmm. talked a little about, a bit about how you had, um, I think the story was that you didn't necessarily intend to become a business owner right away. Right. And you were kind of, you were told, tell your story. I'm getting it, I'm getting it bad, I'm getting okay. it bad. I'm bad at retelling other people's stories. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so um, I was working for somebody um, and I actually still rent space from this gentleman. Huh. Um, who is also a, a fitness professional and has his own business. But um, I was working for him and yeah, I was just gonna work for him and just kind of let that flow into it. Yeah. But um, things were really stressful in his business and I was just like, oh, maybe I should just do my own thing. Yeah. And so it was really, um, kind of like, okay, you have a couple weeks to figure out, do you want to stay here or what do you want to do with this? And so I was just like, um, I'll just start my own business. Yeah. It's, it, How hard could it be? <laughs> you said, okay, well, <laughs> how hard could it be? Right? Everybody in the room is an entrepreneur, so everybody's going, oh yeah, how hard could it be? <laughs> So I, I like the fact that you took the lead. You said, okay, well, this isn't working uh, the way that I would expect it to go. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit stressful right now, so why don't I just do this for myself? Mm -hmm. And you took the opportunity, and I remember you said he helped you, and so you had that yep. support as well. Absolutely, yeah. And that is just, or 
that's amazing because there's a lot of people that if they were in that situation, they would say, oh, okay, well, maybe I should search for another job. And you said, you know, it's time for me to take that leap. This is just another message to me to go, mm -hmm. to make my own way. Yeah, well, it was kind of do it or not, you know? And yeah. like I said, I, I'm one that likes to be challenged. So um, I couldn't just sit there and not do something. I, I call it restless soul syndrome, where my soul <laughs> is just like, you got to go do something. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, okay, I'll do it. <laughs> So what's it like being a personal trainer? I always wonder, okay, when you're when you have some, someone like me who is pretty much lazy, has a sit at the office desk kind of job, and you have to whip somebody like me into shape, which you likely will have to do soon. <laughs> you know, how how does it feel to have to do that? Is it stressful for you? Is it something you love and you're passionate about doing, whipping these lazy folks into shape <laughs> like me, you know? <laughs> it's um, it's a little bit of everything, to be honest with you, mm -hmm. um, and it's it's a journey for everybody. So um, finding what works for different people is challenging, which is yeah. one thing that I truly love about what I do because it really makes me have to think outside the box and think what's going to motivate this person. And then you know, um, one of my clients, you know, if if they're not getting results. What am I doing wrong? Uh huh. And I'm like, wait, no, I'm giving them all the tools, you know. So, you know, it's 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 a partnership, right? Yeah. Like we both have to we both have to do work. Um, they unfortunately have to do a lot more than I do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because they actually have to do the workouts. I'm like, just watch. Um, but um, sounds like you take it really personally. I do. I do because it's it it is very personal. Um, I, um, I'm in there with them, you know, and I, and I'm listening to their struggles because everybody has them. Everybody has those, those, um, those days where their, their negative self-talk is just beating them down, you know, and, and so finding, um, finding that common ground with them and yeah, I mean, I guess yeah. that's where the empathy really comes in. Cause I've been there. Yes. I get it. Yeah, I, I felt it. that from you yeah. when I, um, my husband and I, we did one of her, um, you have these weekend workouts that are in the park and I love that because it's kind of a very easy stepping stone mm -hmm. to say, okay, well, I don't really want to spend an hour working out yet, but this <laughs> 20 minute thing in the park is a great opening for me to try out. And um, I remember I told you about my bad wrist and some other things that I struggled with and you found opportunities to teach me how to do things differently and I appreciated that and I felt like you also understood my being out of shape and all yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. and I didn't feel I didn't feel beat up afterwards <laughs> well you know we all have a, we all have a starting spot and I remember I remember that feeling you know because there's still days where I'll go and do my workout and it's hard mm -hmm. it's actually hard and and then I'm sore for three days after and I'm just yeah. like oh my god it's like punishment <laughs> it's almost it's the good sore yeah, it's a good kind of <laughs> valuable sore. Yes. <laughs> it's working. Is that where you're gonna? Is that what you tell people? I do. <laughs> yeah, my clients come to me and they're like, "I'm really sore," and I'm like, hey! "Good." <laughs> and they're like, "No." Oh, oh sorry. I, I I understand. Take a bath. Soak those sore muscles. <laughs> right. <laughs> Epsom salt. It's mm -hmm. all about the Epsom salt. It people. is. Yep. <laughs> All right, so what's the one thing you want everybody to know that will help them to feel better and to feel more inspired in life and to get out there and to do things that are good for their health? Um, I'm, it, it comes straight back to you. Um, I think um, taking time to, to be nice to yourself um, because you don't really realize how mean you're being to yourself until you've actually started writing it down and you're like, oh my God, I'm so mean to me, right? Um, but loving yourself. Yeah. Um, and getting up every single day and, and making that choice to be like, you know what, this like, I wanna feel good and I wanna be happy. And it's really like, that's all it is. Yeah, I mean, honestly, like loving, it, it's amazing how, um, much easier life gets when you actually love who you are and what you do. 
Thank you so much for spending a little bit of time with myself, Crystal Covington, and Roxy Rahim. I want you to know that you deserve to be seen, heard, and known. Thank you for watching Inside the Women of Denver. I'll see you next time.